I'm Mark Olson with the Los Angeles Times. I'm here with some of the team behind the film Magic Magic, writer and director Sebastian Silva, and actresses Gino Temple and Emily Browning, and actor Michael Sarah. Now, uh, Sebastian, I'll start with you. The film is playing here in the, the midnight section, which is normally known for you know, horror films, uh, supernatural thrillers. And I think with a film called Magic Magic, people are walking in maybe with certain expectations of what the film might be. And it is very much a horrifying film, but I don't know if you'd really call it a horror film. And I'm wondering where the idea of this sort of vacation gone very wrong like, came from. Um, I heard this urban myth um, about a group of Chilean girls that went down to Rio de Janeiro for vacations. And one of them started acting kind of strange and was feeling insecure and started isolating herself from the group. And, and they thought she was kind of like um, just being weird. They didn't really pay attention to her symptoms. And she was slowly building, or not slowly, more likely rapidly building a, a schizophrenic, a build up to a schizophrenic episode. And she had it and they thought she was possessed. And uh, so she was with these, the wrong people in the wrong place, triggering a schizophrenic episode. So it's pretty much, I mean, that uh, story, I took it, I thought it was uh, great f for this, for this. I wanted to explore horror, uh, horror, but uh, yeah, I could have never done anything with uh, creatures or paranormal stuff, but just because I don't find it horrifying or scary at all, you know, because we know it's not real, so... You know, you're safe watching that, but when you watch something that is like um, challenging your mental sort of like uh, boundaries, you know, um, yeah, you get scared and you're scared of your own mind and your own, yeah, yeah, something like that. That's where it came from, like just exploring something terrifying and disturbing and that an anecdote sort of like um, served the purpose of doing that. And now, Gino, your, your performance in the, in the film is extremely intense. And I'm wondering if you did any kind of research into schizophrenia as far as like what people are sort of really like who have episodes like this. And then also what was it like just shooting the film when you had to be at such a level of sort of intensity for such long periods of time? Yeah, um, d definitely researched it. And you know, it was so about voices in your head and really losing touch with what is reality and what isn't. When we got there, we all lived in this house together. So, and we filmed at the house next door and actually the scene where I kicked MC over here in the nose, um, we shot in the house we were staying at. So it was all, we were living it and making it there at the same time. And, and um, yeah, I definitely went into a strange headspace for 30 days. But at the same time, it was lovely because we had communal meals where in the evening after shooting a day of however intense it was and whatever time we finished, you'd come back to the house and have a glass of Pisco and eat And your soup. hero, your hero came to visit. Yeah, met, yeah. <laughs> and someone came and really supported me and helped me get through some really tough moments. My yeah, hero. And now I have to ask, who was that? Uh, my boyfriend. <laughs> and yeah, the moment where I had to jump off the rock, he was the last person I made eye contact with before I threw myself off. <laughs> so that, that was, yeah. That's I looked at, do you remember? Because I, I couldn't do it originally. I was there and I was ready to do it. And you were like, yes, Juno, you're going to do it this time. And I walked up there and I really thought I was going to do it. And I turned around, forgot, broke character and an English accent, just went, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then made eye contact with him and was like, here we go, got to do it. But um, yeah, it was definitely a tough headspace to be in, but I think you were definitely aware of it and were really, you pulled me aside a couple of times and were just like, Amiga. Yeah, I'm like, Amiga, it's just Amiga. a movie. <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah, I had to remind Juno that we were making a movie a couple of times. <laughs> and now, Emily, for you, your character, it's interesting, you're, you sort of have a trauma of your own in the film, which in many ways turns out to be sort of a red herring or almost a distraction of sorts to mm -hmm. The audience, and I'm and I'm wondering how you sort of dealt with that. That it, it it's interesting how it seems in some ways at the beginning of the film that it's maybe going to be your character's story, and then the story kind of hands off to Juno's character in a little bit. And what what was that like for you? How did you sort of deal with that? For me, it was kind of what made it feel legitimate for me that the character was kind of ignoring her. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I hadn't have had that thing to be dealing with the character would have kind of just been completely awful and I think she's pretty awful anyway because really you know she's got her cousin here who she should be taking care of and she's kind of doing it really 
half-heartedly and rolling her eyes behind her back and is kind of not very great friend. I love how she's you're not listening like never yeah. when she like when Alicia takes her to that flower sort of like the flower field and she's like these people are crazy and like you see Emily Sarah's character and like nothing is entering yeah. it's like she's not listening words are just bouncing yeah. from her ears <laughs> oh it's crazy yeah I think but I think that you know having the the character have a pregnancy terminated or whatever it was that happened maybe gives you some kind of understanding of why she's ignoring her but at the same time I think I don't know like what I like about this film is that all of the characters are a little bit awful like they're kind of not yeah. particularly likable and I think that's really cool because I think so many times people are really concerned with playing like lovable characters and other, is the audience gonna love me and I just don't give a shit about that I think you should worry about playing Interesting characters that are real people, mm -hmm. and a lot of the time people are awful. Yeah, so, for most you know, of the time. Most of the time, exactly. <laughs> and now, Michael, you, you play a particularly sort of uh, lovably unlikable character in the film. I mean, it's, it really is like a genuinely original character in a, in a story. I don't know that I've ever seen someone quite like your character, Brink. He's like a little bit fey, a little bit mean, sort of self-centered, yeah. maybe nice in a, some sort of a way. And I'm wondering, it was interesting at the... the Q&A after the screening last night, you mentioned Crispin Glover in the film River's Edge as being maybe a bit of a touchstone for the performance. And I'm wondering, what, like for you, where did this character come from? Like, do you, do you know people like this or, I mean? <laughs> no, I, no, not at all. I don't know anyone like this. I guess we just talked about it a lot, me and Sebastian, and we kind of like rehearsed a little bit. And we'd been, it had been just, you know, kind of cooking for so long while we were waiting for the money to come in and it just it just ended up there. And and changing my hair helped too. And we talked a lot about posture and, and kind of body language. Done. When you first had your hair done. <laughs> Sorry, that was such an amazing moment. Yeah, the character at the beginning it was not um, it was not gonna be a gay in the closet, which I don't know if that comes through really clearly. For me it does. Me too. But um, I think when I put my face in his in it, it's, it's us, us. yeah. yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> Start talking about when you had a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. just a moment where you know it's not real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you know then. Yeah. I think that was a, that was like the greatest epiphany for that character, and it really made it into this, this very special, unique character. That it's one of my favorite characters that I've made in movies, like as a character, because it's like uh, caricature. Yeah, it's, but it's really not, man. I mean, like the struggle that no. gays in the closet go through. Yeah can lead them to do like I don't know they they made them become misogynist because women are such a threat you know and they need to pretend they like them so they hate them and there's all of this complexity going around in Brink's head and he's a victim of himself and uh, and so you sort of forgive him for being like that with Alicia, you know, at the end. So, yeah, it just gave it such a much... Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially in the scene where it's, I think it's one of my favorite shots in the movie all throughout the whole thing, when you come into that cabin and you say, I'm sorry. Mm. Because it's just this, because, you know, all the characters are, like you said, very unlikable, but that is the one moment where I really think you yeah, realize that kind of Brink is sorry and he's mm. so unsure of himself and what he's doing. And I think it's a moment where it definitely me watching it, it's like oh my god this just hit him that actually this maybe isn't the right way to behave around people yeah. Yeah. you know it's just yeah. how and she's been so in trouble like okay. she's been unraveling not just like taking something out on him yeah she's been going crazy yeah. <laughs> he realizes it's nothing really to do with him and now Sebastian you, you have two films here at at the festival both with Michael and them you're, the other film you have Crystal Fairy it's interesting where it's also about a group of young people on holiday but it obviously is, it sort of ends on a much more upbeat and, and positive note than, than what happens here in uh, Magic yeah. Magic. And do you, like, between the two films, like, do you, are you surprised maybe by where there are points of connection to, between them, or do you really see them as two distinct things? I think they're very, very different animals, honestly. I think, um, I mean, they do have similarities. Chile, Michael Sarah, my brother, woman in distress, you know, and, but, uh, yeah, other than those ingredients that make, they connect them, uh, I think they're really different pieces. And one is like a really elaborate sculptor and the other one is a really beautifully done drawing, I think. It's, they're very different things. Um, and also the way they make you feel. Like honestly, one is like an uplifting, light, spontaneous road trip about compassion and friendship. And the other one is like a thick, 
um, disturbing movie about selfishness and schizophrenia. So I think, yeah, one is like the feel-good movie of the year, the other one is the feel-bad movie of the year. But Michael, do you think you realized that like, as you were making them, or is that only maybe becoming more clear to you as you've had a chance to like, see them as finished films? No, I wasn't really thinking about similarities between them, because we made them separately and they were each their own focus. And um, They are so related, though, to me. I mean, Crystal Fairy happened because we were trying to get Magic Magic made and it was sort of a reaction to this frustration that we had of not being able to get it financed and um, yeah so to me they're really really tied together but they're, they're, they're completely different. I had to make different sure that places. yeah yeah I mean like yes, everything is like yeah. one is the, the desert the other one's the Patagonia it's like they're really really, really opposites and I had to be really aware that they were actually very different movies because I couldn't. I could not screw my producers for Magic Magic and make him a similar movie right before. Right. So I had to promise them because I was doing it with Michael. Agustin was going to be on it in it right before Magic Magic. So I had to promise myself to really make two extremely different films. So we started with Michael's hair. It was really important that he was not going to speak Spanish in Crystal Fairy. Nothing at all. And so you say like gracias. I think is yeah. the only word you say in Spanish. Yeah. And his hair is so different. And he, the way he moves and everything, yeah, we made sure it was, they were very different. But also, your performance in Magic Magic, like, that's such a different, amazing yeah. performance. Yeah, it's yeah. something that, like, oh, it's so amazing for you. It's such a different, brilliant, Brink is a strange, amazing character. Oh, well, look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> And that uh, seems like a great place for us to wrap up. Uh, thank you to uh, Juno Temple, Emily Browning, and Michael Sarah, and Sebastian Silva for thank you, Magic Magic. Thanks, thank Mark, very much. <laughs>